So oh, that's when he hilarious. Chose, okay. When he chose okay. his English pen name, he went Sam Lake. <laughs> that's that's funny. That's you know what? Respect. That's pretty cool. <laughs> but it's as simple as that, you know, you might as well. That's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know what else is funny? What's that? Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to Pixel It. My name is Kevin. With me, as always, is Phil. And on uh, today's show, we're, we're, we're starting a brand new book. And yes. it's a book about books, kind of. A, book, a, a Bookerton. That's, what, that's yeah. what you call a person who writes books, right? It's a Bookerton? A Bookerton, uh, yes. Okay. Yes. Well, only if they've been published, though. Only if they've been published. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, it's uh, just a... Uh, a sparkling a, amateur a booker writer. Teen, a a Bookerteen <laughs> is booker is non published, and a yeah. Bookerton is published. Yeah, exactly. It's there we go. As that. Yeah, <laughs> sparkling. <laughs> Otherwise, it's just sparkling Bookerton. Sparkling, like, sparkling Bookerton. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking so of you which, have to come your, from uh, that region of the yes, Upper West Side. You have to. You have to uh, be. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it has to come from that specific region of Philadelphia, uh, or else. <laughs> Or else it's just a sparkling throwing batteries at Santa Claus. That's all. (laughs) Um, In case you somehow missed the title of the episode, we're talking about Alan Wake. Alan Wake. The novelization of Alan Wake. And uh, the book is written by uh, Rick Burroughs. Yes. Phil, who is Rick Burroughs? Well, if you look at the very back of the book... Uh, you'll see this about the author blurb, and I'm just going to read it real quick. Rick Burroughs lives in a small cabin that he built himself, an A-frame on 40 acres in the Pacific Northwest. Nice. Uh, effectively off the grid, Burroughs avoids processed food, processed news, and celebrity culture. He has traveled extensively in South America, Africa, and the Middle East. He has not yet found what he is looking for. Alan Wake is his first novel. Sounds like bullshit, right? Yeah. Like That, that kind of sounds like like a fake about the author thing. And I right. was really intrigued by that when I started doing the research. Yeah, because it sounds a little bit too much like your dream life. But it does sound a little like that, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. It sounds a little suspiciously and... like Phil living out on a farm, not eat, eating the only the food that he kills. Yeah, yeah. Off the grid, <laughs> effectively. <laughs> traveling extensively. Yeah, it does sound very suspicious. And I got uh, infuriated with all this, especially... Uh, when you consider this is his first novel, uh, and without without uh, jumping too far ahead, it's shockingly competent uh, for a sure. first novel. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I went ahead and looked up this Rick Burroughs person, and there is nothing. There is nothing Ooh. on this guy. Um, Off the he, grid, indeed. Yeah, he tr- he either truly is mostly off the grid. And lives this weird eclectic life, and this is just something he did as a favor to Sam Lake or to whoever. Like, and, and or it's a pen name of somebody else, and and you'll get into or who Sam just, Lake is, but it's just I Sam think, Lake. I think it might be <laughs> Sam Lake. I'm starting to suspect <laughs> that maybe this is just. Rick. I don't know why. Uh, I don't know why he would go with Rick Burr. They could have gone real cute and been like Alan Wake, written by Alan Wake, or something like that. Sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it, 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 but uh, I, I don't know what the motivation would be, but um, but th- th- that's all I could find of Rick Burroughs. There's nothing, not a damn thing. Yeah, um, yeah. I just googled it, and in the Sam Lake subreddit, uh, there's <laughs> someone wrote a small review of Alan Wake's novelization. I just finished. Um, it's solid, especially for a first novel in there. And there's a little bit about the author, Rick Burroughs, everything you just said. Um, so somebody said, um, uh, that, that some, some people are saying that like, yeah, it's, it's hundred percent Sam Lake writing under an assumed name of Rick Burroughs. Um, but it's not confirmed anywhere, but I think other people, it seems like other people have gotten to that, you know, Come to that conclusion, be like, this guy doesn't exist, <laughs> right? Exactly. <laughs> so yeah, the 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 game is Alan Wake. Um, it's an action adventure game. It's it's by Remedy Studios, and it's one of the one of the games written by uh, Sam Lake um, for Remedy. Um, he's he's uh, Remedy's done. Whole bunch of games, uh, including uh, Death Rally, 
Max Payne, Alan Wake, um, and most recently is the most recent big one that that I'm uh, uh, I was a huge fan of Control, which oh, yes. is um, so if Alan Wake is like action adventure, Control is more on the action side. Um, and uh, between the two of them, there's a there's a subtle connection. And don't it's like, you know, it, the connection between the two of them kind of is is spoiler territory for Alan Wake. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes. Because Control takes place after Alan Wake. But yeah, the game was released in 2010. Um, it was uh, originally for the Xbox 360. Um, and then it's since been released uh, for every other console um so yeah. it's on it's on everything you can get it on steam now and, and all that stuff but yeah 2010 it was an xbox title and then 2012 it, it rolled out to everything else um there is a sequel in the works um yes. as of 2021 slated to come out this october so is it that soon oh yeah what is going yeah. on with this year, man? I'm never going to catch up. <laughs> this, I, it's a good problem to have, I admit, but there's so many things on my radar I want to try out that, for the end of that, the year. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, Alan Wake 2 coming out, and I'm I'm really curious to see what it does post in a post-control world uh, with, with the character. I guess I better uh, because play there was control. a DLC for control. There was a DLC for control that was just called AWE. Um, and I think it was called, it, it was like the Alan Wake experiment or something like that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, AWE can, yeah. The Alan Wake expansion. Um, and <laughs> it's not just a clever name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And also AWE is the, um, is uh stands for altered world events which okay. are in in the bureau of control every time one of these objects of power uh messes with the fabric of reality it creates an altered world event which is like a collapse between multiple realities at once um not all objects of powers do that but every that there's these all these objects of power and that's when it starts getting into the, the alan wake spoiler territory <laughs> so before we go too far down that road we're just going to go ahead and get started uh what surprised me most about the book uh before we get started uh coming off of our last book which was xcom ufo defense a novel <laughs> a um, novel yes was that this book has plot and characters. It's uh, right off the bat, you can tell uh, that it has a plot and characters. That is yeah. absolutely true. Yeah, that is true. Would you say? So, would you say that it's enough uh, plot and characters to put the body in the mosh? Yeah, I'd say we should. Uh, I think so. We should put. We should put the body in the mosh. All right. Um, All right. And uh, whether that's Alice's body or not, we don't know. We don't know yet. We don't know. We yet. don't know yet. We and, haven't and You got to collect all the pages to get the good. Gotta, ending anyway, you got to collect so. the manuscript pages yeah. before you yeah. really know. For you. Yeah, it's. Mm. I didn't have the patience for that. I'd never do anymore. The collectibles, collectathons. I, just, I love the collectibles, but I always run out of steam before the before I get. I'm into the third I'm act. like super hyped for it at the beginning, and probably yeah. by like hour two, I'm like, oh yeah, it's still, th I'm not. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But yeah, by I'm the time I get it. like two thirds of the way through, I'm just like, I just let's just we're just gonna finish this game. So, yeah, that's, and that's fine. Heads heads down. Let's get to credits. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Um, so the book starts with a prologue, dream sequence, uh, straight from, yeah, and you know me, I hate prologue dream sequences, but <laughs> this is straight from the video game. Like, so you can't really, can't, I can't really fault the book for starting the same way that the game started. Um, one of the things that's different between the book and the game, and I started up the game, I never beat the game, but I started it up right before we were recording just to kind of like refamiliarize myself with the character from the game and all that stuff is that the game 
is told in the first person, as in all the every all of Alan's uh, voiceovers are are I and 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 what have you. The book is told from the third person, so a slight difference. Yeah. yeah. Prologue starts. Dream sequence. Alan is driving down the road and he hits a hitchhiker with his car, or at least he thinks he does. Uh, the hitchhiker turns out to be one of the characters from his stories and begins chasing uh, Alan with an axe, trying to kill him and calling after him. Uh, you're like, ah, I'm going to get you, Alan, all that stuff. Uh, Alan is running, running, running. He runs into a man named Clay Stewart, uh, who tries to hold off the hitchhiker, but is axed to death. Yes. Um, <laughs> Not just any axing. He axed him to death. Axed him to death. Murdered the shit out of him. Yes, um, he sure did. <laughs> he sure did. Alan gets into the cabin, and the hitchhiker disappears, but then the cabin starts shaking as if it's in a storm. And then a deep-sea diver appears and tells him a poem about how Alan is safe in the light and that the darkness can't hurt him there. And he wakes up. Chapter one. <laughs> Um, Alan was asleep in his car on a ferry and, uh, his wife is beckoning him to look at the view that she's seeing out in the railing. Um, and, uh, we get some little details between Alan in the book and Alan in the game and that Alan, the book was like, it's a good view. All right. From here, looking yeah. at his wife's butt. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, he's totally that guy. It makes a he, lot of sense. Yeah. He's totally that guy. Their other yep. way to, I mean, and Sam Lake, if you happen to be, uh, listening to this at some point, you get, you do have the face of a guy that is going to say something like that. He is very smarmy looking. Yeah. <laughs> So they're on their way to Bright Falls, which is a non-specific Pacific Northwest logging town for vacation. Um, we get a lot of stuff about how Alan is kind of a grumpy guy by nature. Um, when while Alice is prodding Alan to get his picture taken, an old man named Pat Main, the local radio host, uh, starts talking to them about Deerfest and how it's the perfect time that they're in town. Uh, Deerfest is two weeks away. Yeah. Um, Alan nearly picks a fight with another random dude on the ferry who was staring at them. Yes, um, it gets weird fast. Yeah, it gets weird fast. It really sets up uh, that you know Alice is the tender-hearted uh, woman and Alice, Alan is the bitter man trope. Yes, like that kind of couple. He's, um, he's, he's an asshole pretty quick in the story. Very it, quickly it, in the story. Yeah, yeah. We we don't waste any time on that one. No, uh, they kiss. They get back in the car and they drive off the ferry. Uh, and Alan's talking about being surrounded by nature, and he's like, hey, if you're good, I'll take you to Deer Fest and let you pet Bambi. And <laughs> Alice re responds to him, uh, look where you are, Alan. Around here, they don't pet Bambi. They eat him. Yes, which is <laughs> actually, I would kind of expected that to be his line. Uh, so that was, that was, that it was, was a little uh, reversal there. Yeah. yeah, that was interesting. Give me one yeah. second. The, the the door opened creepily, and I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> There's the culprit. You know what you need is like a little kitty door on your office. Uh, that would be neat. I should. Yeah, they would love that, actually. <laughs> they would so really she, go for that. She can just, like, walk in and out. Um, yeah, that would be cute. That would be cute. Speaking of cute, chapter two. Chapter cute two. chapter. Yes. It's a very cute chapter. Uh, Alan is being a little snobbish about the town. He complains that there's no Starbucks. Um, <laughs> Alice drops Alan off to get gas, and Alan goes into a diner uh, to get the keys to the cabin, and he bumps into a life-size cardboard cutout of himself, advertising his latest book, The Sudden Stop. And he hasn't written anything yet for his new novel, Departure. Uh, he meets a super fan by the name of Rose Marigold, who, uh, which is Flower Flower, isn't Marigold's That's a, a That is a name, man. That is a name. That is, that is a name. Uh, she works at the diner, and there's also Rusty, the park ranger, uh, who she refers to as black coffee under a thin layer of skin. Yeah, and, <laughs> I, was, I like that. That was good. <laughs> and the brothers Tor and Odin Anderson, who had wandered off from the psychiatric facility. 
uh, and the Anderson brothers at Hector him into playing B2 on the jukebox, which is the coconut song. I don't know what what the coconut song refers to, but are they talking about I've got a lovely bunch of coconuts? Maybe or lime in the coconut. Lime in the coconut. That that's also lime yeah. in the coconut. Drink it full oh, up. up. I, yeah, I, I said don't. doctor. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's definitely one or the other. That's all there it's is. It's one going. or the other. Uh, it's yeah, I'm gonna go with lime other. in the coconut because right. I think. I think that was that's more likely to be on the jukebox. That's actually, you know what? Uh, good point. Very good point. Um, Alan goes into the back to find Carl Stuckey, but instead finds a creepy old lady in black who gives him the key to the cabin. Which is like the fact that he doesn't really ask any questions about it is is always struck me as a little weird. Yeah, uh, she's like, "I will be by later to check on you," and he's like, "No, please don't." <laughs> please. Uh... <laughs> I don't think that. Okay. No, thank you. I, I think we've all been there too. Where it's just, I'm going to come by. No, you. D- oh, okay. Shit. Okay. I would You're love really to meet come your by, wife. You? Want to meet your wife? Yeah. Um, no. No. Uh, um, there's another woman, another old woman, holding a lantern, and she warns him how he's lucky he could have gotten hurt in the dark. Um, which is, we're really hammering home that the dark is bad. It, they, they, <laughs> yeah. Like, remember how the dark is bad? Yes. Every second of my life. Yes, of course. <laughs> I hate the dark. I'm scared of the dark. So let's, yeah, got it. Uh, the situation in the diner continues to twin peaks as the twins are now demanding alcohol. <laughs> yeah. It, it really does peak in the peaks, doesn't it? It's, it's. <laughs> Um, Alice pulls up and he he's like, all right, I'm out of here. Um, so chapter three, we start with uh, Alan and Alice walking through the woods. Uh, Alice has pulled off to the side of the road because she thought she saw something. Mm-hmm. And what she saw was a car that looks like it was simply deposited in the woods. It couldn't have been driven out there because of where it is. And they're like floating theories back and forth to each other. Maybe it was a tornado picked it up somehow. Yeah, or, like it or dropped it, out of the sky. Or it like fell out of the back of a cargo airplane or or something like that. Um, until Alice notices that it's getting dark and she starts rushing back to the car. And while they're in the car, they continue uh, talking about the different ways it could have been uh, put there. A UFO, uh, my favorite was the siege engine, uh, Alice says that some engineering students made a siege engine and, and just flung the car. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it used the, the insurance money to buy <laughs> chain to, to mail buy more shit. to buy chain mail. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, things. When they get to the and then they see the cabin, it's an absolutely gorgeous view. Um, Alan gets a phone call uh, from his agent Barry, but brushes him off. Um, and they get to the cabin. Alan heads uh, to turn on the generator while Alice goes inside. And we get a little bit more from Alice, uh, from Alan about how Alice is deathly afraid of the dark, like true phobia levels. Um, and then Alan notices the initials TJ and TZ and BJ uh, carved into the, the, the cabin. Um, and also when he goes inside, he knows there's books by someone named Thomas Zane in the cabin. Um, from the radio, we hear Pat Maine is, is hosting his radio show. Uh, Alan goes upstairs and Alice surprises him. Uh, not that she is uh, half undressed. That is not the surprise. That is not the surprise. That was just a detail thrown in there. Uh, <laughs> she, she, she surprises him with a, his typewriter. She brought her. She brought his typewriter along. Like, here's your typewriter in case you feel like writing. And he's just like, I, I, I don't want to. I thought we were taking a vacation. <laughs> he really loses his shit. He uh, loses his goddamn mind. He really does. <laughs> it's, and and like it's, you said, we're, we're they don't they don't ease up on Alan Wake being an asshole at this point. So yeah. So yeah, um, Alan loses his shit, um, and then uh, she ta- She mentions Doctor Hartman, the psychiatrist from the local clinic, 
uh, is like renowned for working with creators. And he's like, oh, and this is why we're here. Ah. <laughs> and Alan walks walks out. Um, he's halfway across the bridge um, when the lights cut out. And she just starts screaming as soon as, because it's dark. And we have established firmly that she is uh, terrified of darkness. Yes. Um, Alan runs up to the bedroom, back into the bedroom. She's gone. She had been screaming that someone was after her. And then he runs and he looks outside and in the lake, he thinks he sees her sinking into the lake and he dives in after her. And um, so now we're in chapter four. And in chapter four, at the beginning, Alan starts lo- is in the water. He's losing his percep- his sense of direction, uh, which if you've ever been in water at night, it is Ooh. that is easy to do. <laughs> easy to do. Easy to do. <laughs> uh, don't go swimming at night with, it is without, without some lights or something like that Ooh. because you can't tell which way is up uh, once you crazy. get down there. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and then Alice's voice screaming wakes him up and he wakes up from, uh, a, the nightmare having been in a car accident. He has no memory between the car accident and diving in the water. And he looks through their stuff in the trunk and then tries to put a note on the windshield of the car. I thought this was hilarious that he puts the note under the windshield of the car. And then as he does that, the car rolls off. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> and put it right here and here. oak and boom. There go, there go, there, there it goes. Uh, 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 okay. All right. Not, not gonna get the deposit back on that uh, that's, that vehicle. Yeah. That's uh <laughs> I really should have uh paid the extra fifteen dollars for the uh insurance. Yeah, insurance on, on that, that one. rental. Yeah, that was uh <laughs> Good for me. Want to save a buck. Awesome. Yeah. Good for me. Uh, He continues through the woods and his head wound is oozing. Um, And as he's walking, paper begins to fall from the sky and he grabs it. And it's a manuscript. It's his manuscript that he hasn't even started yet. Um, The chapter ends with a segment possibly from the manuscript. I don't really know. Um, It's just written in the book itself, it's like outlined in, it's like outlined as separate from everything else. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I feel it's like a, this is, this has got to be from the game, right? This, this. Yeah. This I, I assume it's, it's a specific to the stuff you read in the game. Right. Um, the segment is about a man named Blaine and his wife, Asako, and uh, his in laws visiting from Japan as they drive around Bright Falls in an RV yes. and he's, he's annoyed about it. Yes. He's just, just super curmudgeon pissed off that what's yeah. it? He says something like they're here from Japan. They want to take a picture of the sunset or something. Uh, he's like, they don't uh, have the sunsets sun- in Japan. Of the sunset as if there's no sunsets in Japan. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> there, there are absolutely things that are worth being annoyed at your uh, in-laws visiting over. There's no question about it, but <laughs> You're getting it to the point where it's like, oh no, you're the asshole here, and I wonder. Oh yeah, I wonder if we're ever going to get a character who isn't an asshole. Uh, <laughs> I'm surrounded the, by assholes. I'm surrounded by assholes. Yo, um. <laughs> keep going, assholes. <laughs> the Alan Wake story. <laughs> the Alan Wake story. <laughs> Alan Wake, <laughs> the lunchbox. Alan Wake, <laughs> the flamethrower. Alan, Alan Wake, the video. I, love it. I, haven't, I haven't watched that movie in forever. Now I have to watch that. We Alan just Wake got done VHS. watching all. Of, we, yeah, that's what it was. See, we just got done watching all the Star Wars movies, so we figured, you know what, we might as well watch a good one and watch Spaceballs. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, what the hell am I looking at? Now, sir. We're now, looking at sir. now. <laughs> <laughs> well, what happened to then? We just passed that. When? Just now. <laughs> when will then be now? Soon. <laughs> I think my favorite uh I think my favorite line in that whole movie was uh is this safe? Of course. Scotty beamed me twice last night. It was wonderful. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh God, I gotta watch that movie uh, Ag- again. Happy birthday, Mel Brooks! He just turned eighty nine. Eighty nine, Jesus! 89. I thought he was. I thought he was older than that for some no, reason. No, he's he's he hasn't hit the ninety uh, mark. He hasn't yet. hit ninety yet. But so we got another 10, 15 years with him. We're good. We had a good. Yeah, we got a, good. a good amount of time with Mel Brooks. Yeah. He's he's a national treasure, and we are not going to let him uh, uh, go good uh, go into that good night. It's, no, it's, no. It's, <laughs> They're not allowing that. I'm afraid not. <laughs> <laughs> I know you want to be reunited with your beloved wife, but uh, no, we, we, we just want to sit around and look at you for another 20, <laughs> 30 years. It's fine. It's, it's fine. fine. And, it's and fine, just, you guys. You, your, son, your son will take, get, take care, good care of you. Yeah. Um, Max, I mean, he's got all that, that, that zombie. That zombie money. He's got that zombie money. <laughs> mm-hmm. Good zombie money. Um, chapter five, Alan keeps on walking and there's a line in here, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, Phil had a stand up routine about 13 years ago, oh, about <laughs> 14 years ago, about cicadas. Yes. Um, <laughs> and how basically the noise they're making is just how they're screaming um fuck me to each other yeah and in this book there is a line where the crickets alan says that the crickets noise is just them saying pick me pick me yeah over that's it yeah pick again. me pick me <laughs> <laughs> and i just couldn't i, I just started laughing because i couldn't help it and it, very- it, it was very diplomatic the, way of putting it, Rick Burrows. Uh, Rick Burrows. <laughs> um, I remember it, and I, it was also the last thing you would do in your set because it, yeah. re, it required it was literally just Phil. me on stage screaming. Uh, <laughs> and showing. where do we go from there? So <laughs> fuck me as loud as possible. Yeah, <laughs> off the, the mic, mic because I would have blown every. Yeah, like just screaming, <laughs> and when you've got a grown man clutching the side of a microphone stand, pretending to be a bug screaming, fuck me over and over again at the top of his lungs. You don't, there's nowhere to go from there. There's nowhere to go. It has to be your closer. That's your closer. So, um, yeah, those, those of you in, in 2009, 2010 who, uh, who hung around, uh, was it club one? Where, where would you have done Club that? One, uh, <laughs> Club Bean. One, and in Savannah, Georgia, and you, you're the real ones who know what I'm talking you know, about. You, this, is, this is for y'all, y'all, all y'all, all out there, y'all the real who ones. spent time in Club One in Savannah, Georgia, when when one Phil Keeling was was uh, was doing one of his sets, <laughs> was screaming his head off. <laughs> I had a I had a method. I had a method. I would I uh, I would get nervous to be on stage. Um, so I would drink beer, uh, which pretty normal, but I had a, I had a scientific mathematical method, uh, where I would have, um, three beers and then I would go on stage holding my fourth beer, a a new beer. And I would drink that through my set. And that was just enough that I was chill and I wouldn't tremble and freak out. Uh, but, uh, but I was still sharp. Uh, and I sure. was still I was still on top of my shit uh, because I saw something on online the other day uh, that was so accurate that it hurt that it said uh, people with anxiety the first two drinks uh, don't really count they just turn you into a normal human being uh, <laughs> and yeah uh, so that was what I would do and 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 that was yeah that's where a lot of that shit came from uh, when you have when you have an actual method of like, all right, no, I, I can't have, cause I would, I did one where I had four beers and took my fifth beer up there and died up there. Just absolutely sure. sucked ass. And I, never again, never again. Listen, kids, if you're about three six, plus one, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if, you're, if you're six feet tall, about two between two fifty, two eighty, And uh, you're thinking about doing stand up three beers, then your fourth beer on stage. Don't fuck with the method. It's just <laughs> math. It's math. Math, it's math is math, and books yeah, math are bread. Is math is math. <laughs> books are bread. Um, <laughs> Still have to make that. <laughs> uh, 
boy. Uh, where the hell are we? Oh, yeah, crickets pick me. Um, he, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he eventually arrives at a logging camp, and as he's walking through the camp, he hears a man calling out in pain, and it's a hunter who's been all cut up by an axe. And lo and behold is Carl Stuckey, the proprietor of the the cabinry, uh, is holding the axe and just repeating random lines from marketing brochures. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he sure is. It's weird. And the emphasis that the author it's places on wrong. the different yeah. words. It's so strange. Let's see if we can find some. Premium cabins. Yeah. St- weird, weird stuff like that. He's, he's just talking about the cabins and like de- you you'll lose your deposit if you if you no show. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's so strange, and not even not even yet in a in a because th- for anyone who hasn't figured it out yet, this is Stephen King the game basically. Yes, and uh, and you can see that kind of Kingian influence, if you will, based on the game starts with a Stephen King quote. Right, right. So <laughs> they, they know what they're doing. They yeah. know what they're doing, and and th- this is this is something that's very Stephen King having a guy chasing you with an axe while quoting like marketing spiels, and yeah. it's it's a little silly, but you see where they're going with it. So right, exactly. <laughs> um, so the hunter is on the ground. Uh, uh, Alan's like, "What are you doing? Did you take my wife? Did you did did do you have my wife? Um, <laughs> you fucked and- my wife." Uh, Carl kills the hunter, uh, chops him up real good, and Alan runs to a trailer uh, in the uh, logging camp. And inside the trailer, he finds a revolver, uh, another manuscript page, and tries to dial 911. But Carl cuts the line after he gets someone on the phone. Uh, And then Carl rams the trailer with a bulldozer. Alan jumps out of the trailer through the back door, um, before the trailer and the bulldozer go over the cliff. Um, and then he checks the manuscript page and it refers to something called the Taken. Um, yes. He continues on through the woods uh, when he's attacked by two men with axes. Axes, And during the fight, Alan notices that putting the flashlight on them before shooting them strips away their uh, darkness armor, basically. Yeah. Uh, and they're killed. And when they're killed, uh, their bodies just vanish. Um, so cleanup's easy. It cleanup's easy, uh, and no cops. You know, you don't have to really deal with the cops w- with that fun. one. Yes. Um, the chapter ends with another segment, uh, non-linear segment thrown in there. Ends with Alice lining up a photograph of the cabin and seeing a shadowy figure behind it. Um, chapter six. Wake continues towards the Stucky gas station. Um, and then puts two and two together that the taken from the manuscript page are what he has been fighting. And he begins to understand Alice's fear of the darkness. As he gets closer to the gas station, he hears Stucky again, reciting his marketing taglines, including one about hot dogs. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's so bell- weird. <laughs> the belly burster is the best hot dog. I, I think it was honestly at this point. <laughs> The and then and then goes into like everyone knows that's the best hot dog and this one is the second best hot dog and like at that point I was like okay I like this I'm in, I'm in. this is great this is never great. touch a salad a man needs a hearty meal to make it through the day yeah it becomes <laughs> it becomes Jordan Peterson on us and, and it, just, <laughs> it becomes Jordan Peterson it's <laughs> fucking carnivore diet no no uh, yeah it's all meat never touch a salad. <laughs> Hate your uh, life. M- Melanie Mack over there shoving down a stick of butter into her <laughs> mouth. Um, <laughs> God. <laughs> What's going on with this fucking world, dude? <laughs> you know, right wing grifters will really do whatever they, they want um, to make money. They're, they're, they'll just call it, they'll just say it's anti woke and then do something absurd and, uh, and they'll. People will give them money for that. I yeah, don't understand it. It, it, works. it, but it works. It works. We, uh, it works. We, it's... we were in we were in a uh, small town, South Carolina, uh, just yesterday, uh, where my wife's a lot of her family lives out there, and they recently had a Trump rally, and Trump and 
Marjorie Taylor Greene and uh, Lindsey Graham and and all Oof. kinds of just human awful uh, just uh, showed up and well and, Lindsey Graham uh, is your is your senator right yeah He's, yeah I mean that one at least you're like yeah I guess uh, yeah I guess uh, but it was just it was we obviously we missed that but uh, we did see the aftermath of it with just like all the people. Uh, like there was a restaurant that was like charging eighty dollars for parking for the Trump rally, and like it's like okay, yeah, that's that's hilarious. Who you are. And, Love it. Uh, but we passed this sign on the highway for a gun store, and it said it had the name of the store, and it said fr- uh, free rifle for any U.S. presidents who show up at our store. Uh, and I was like, oh, you're just you're really oh wow, like wow. <laughs> You know what? You shot your shot, and I can't. You even, shot your shot. Yeah, I can't even pretend that I don't respect it. Like I, <laughs> I do. That was that was a fair effort. That was a fair effort. Yeah. Uh, that that man has never looked at a gun, let alone held and shot one, cleaned <laughs> one. I don't know how people fall for this. It's like, look at that man. Does that man look like he knows his way around an AR-15 to you? Does that man know, look like he knows around his way around a firearm? No, I wouldn't trust him with a Nintendo Switch. Are you fucking kidding me? How are you fooled so badly? It's ridiculous. This is a man that needs to, to be waited on hand and foot. Yes, for everything. <laughs> everything. He has never not been rich. You, he yeah, has you always really had peop, like, people doing things for him. Do you think yes. he understands anything about firearms? No, he doesn't. You are being lied to. Yeah, and it, it, you're being grifted. And at a certain so and if it, hard. And if it was just you who's being affected, I'd sit back and let it happen. I'd, I'd just eat popcorn. And, and but it's leave not it alone. just but, you. But it's you, not just you. <laughs> so. You're dragging all of us down with on, with man. us because you're not critically thinking about the. The rich billionaire from New York City who who said he was going to grift the right wing five years before he started grifting the right wing. He's he is he is he has he, has, he, he doesn't hide anything. No, no. Anyway, he know how anyway, he doesn't know Alan how Wake. Alan Wake, <laughs> Alan Wake, <laughs> Fucking Alan Wake. We're we're, Alan Wake. we're in chapter six. We're still yeah. going through chapter six. Yeah. Um, hot dogs. That's how we got there. Um, hot dogs. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Nailed it. Nailed it. Wake kills Stucky with the light and the revolver like the others, and the body dissolves into nothingness. Um, when Wake gets to Stucky's, he sees that Deerfest is now seven days away. So two weeks. Hmm. On the radio, Wake hears a call into the Pat Main show from Maurice Horton about how his dog Toby had disappeared into the woods. Nearby on a TV screen, Wake sees a man typing on a typewriter over static, and then it disappears. Uh, from the gas station, Alan dials 911. And we, at the end of the chapter, we get another segment uh, about Rose and Rusty. Um, and that's that's... Uh, Rose and Rusty are the are two characters we had seen, uh, we had heard from earlier. They're yeah. the uh, at the diner and the diner store employee, um, diner store employee, diner employee. <laughs> it's it's the diner store. It sells you've talking, diners. You've been talking politics. You're all you're all kerfuffled. I get it. I'm it's, all kerfuffled. It, yeah, it happens. Uh, it happens. It sells diners. Uh, prefab diners. Yeah. Uh, you it's go in, easier. you look at the, um, actually, have you ever seen like the, a lot of those diners are just, were just like prefab. Like you could just buy them as like a, it was like a trailer that you, you bought and then you just like dropped it down into the spot and you hooked up the water and all that stuff. I'm not surprised. I mean, yeah, that yeah. makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, that would be how I would want to do it. Of course, that's how I want to do my home so i'm yeah you I'm just, literally like we're gonna live in a we're gonna live in a trailer you know that right no i'm just like, yeah, no, no. I'm like okay cool it uh, makes you wish for the days where you could buy a house from sears yes. as in you order you write in to sears and be like i would like one house please and then a truck came by and dropped off all the shit the kit that you needed and you built the house precisely uh, that that would be way way better uh, yeah i don't trust myself with any of that but you know yeah, yeah but you know <laughs> you, you could build your own damn house yeah, um that'd be awesome. 
Chapter 7, Alan is being investigated by Dr. Nelson at the sheriff's station, looking at the head wound. Uh, He wants to give Alan an MRI, but Alan is like, no. Uh, He wants to give Alan an MRI because Alan is talking about a cabin that doesn't exist. There is no island in the middle of Crater Lake. Uh, Never was. and uh, Or there was back in the 1970s when it sunk because of volcanic activity or something like, like that. Literally sank. <laughs> like like it literally yeah. sank. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, oh, that's amazing. So the doctor's like, well, you know, you got a concussion, so <laughs> yeah. just don't He's like, I'm gonna sleep, go get the sheriff. <laughs> don't don't fall asleep. I'm don't fall asleep. I'm gonna get the sheriff. And then first thing Alan does is fall asleep. Yeah. Um, yeah. Immediately, in fact. Immediately dozes off. He has a dream about a time that they were in their apartment in New York and the lights went out and Alice was having a, a pretty big moment about it. What was that? And like a car backfired outside. Oh, um Lord. yeah. Um Alice is having a pretty big moment about it. So the sheriff wakes him up and reminds him that he shouldn't sleep for at least eight hours because of the concussion. Yeah. And then he tells her about the cabin that they were staying at. And the sheriff is like, again, it doesn't exist. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and he, he's what? very insistent on this. It's like, you've got to, it, it, it doesn't exist. What's up? I just, mm. I thought Camilla was knocking at the door. Uh. Um, uh, yeah, it doesn't exist. So, like, what? A, oh, you know what? It's fucking people with the stupid. Uh, it's we're recording on July fifth, everybody. Oh, are people still setting off fireworks? They're still setting off fireworks, oh, and geez. it's it's driving the dogs nuts. Of course it is, um, because I live in Florida, and people think it's cool. To just set off big old micro explosions in their backyard. Forever. For whatever reason. Yeah, just just do it forever. It's fine. Just do it forever. Yeah. Anyway. Uh now I lost where we are. Stupid fireworks. Uh Sheriff wakes him up. There we go. Cabin yeah. doesn't exist. Uh Alan says something like, She's very trustworthy, but I don't trust her with the truth. And I was yeah. like, Huh. Okay, Alan, you do you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Like, uh, uh, all right. You're gonna, um, you gonna expand on that? No. Okay. No worries. No, okay. we're we're just gonna leave that there. Just keep, keep going. Um, and there's Fine. there's the Munchkin. What's up, Camilla? Hello. Hi. <laughs> hey. Bye bye. Okay. Um. Then Alan gets a phone call, uh, from somebody who claims that he has. He has Alice and that he has kidnapped her and Alan must meet him, meet him at Lover's Peak at midnight. Um, So Alan's going to go leave the sheriff's station. He runs into the lantern lady again, Miss Weaver, who is checking the lights for them. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) She's like, remember, stay out of the dark. Thanks. (laughs) Thanks. Where did you get that Um, lantern? Never mind. Never mind. Thanks. Living tutorial. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, so as also as he's leaving, a man is being dragged in in handcuffs, being hysterical about needing more light and not wanting any shadows in his cell. Yes. Um, Dr. Hartman is also in the lobby. And despite all the stuff that Alan has going on, going on right now, his wife is missing, potentially kidnapped. Dr. Hartman's like, Hey, buddy, why don't you come in for a therapy session for for creatives? You know, yeah. you should you should do it. And yeah, Alan that's punches. What I do, I could help you. Alan punches the ever loving shit out of him, and I was like, sure yes, does. yes. He and he deserves it. He Dr. Did the Hartman right just thing. he did the right thing. He did the right thing. Did the right thing. Um, he's held back from hitting him more because I think Alan would have just beat this guy to death if. If he, wasn't being, if he wasn't being held back by the sheriff. He really um, is a violent guy. Like, for, he's a, for a violent, writer, temperamental he, he throws guy. Hands. It's crazy. He throws hands. Uh, Barry, uh, Alan's agent, arrives. And Barry tells Hartman and the sheriff to get their hands off his client. Uh, and the sheriff says, all right, well, Alan, you need to come back later when you're feeling better. 
Um, and Dr. Hartman's like, I'm not going to press charges. Mm-hmm. Uh, just not mm-hmm. this. This is hazard of the position. This just hazard of the out. position. I'm used to creatives losing their yes. shit. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Indubitably. Yes. Um, yes. Alan and Barry uh, load the luggage into Barry's car, and the chapter ends with a segment about the taken and how they, uh, they have their echoes of their former selves. So they, they might have memories or whatever that they might keep talking in loops or, or what have you. Mm-hmm. Chapter eight, uh, Barry apparently has been in town for two days and he hadn't heard from Alan since that first day phone call. Uh, Alan has Barry drive him to the gas station first to get the gun. And then on the drive to the lake where the lake house would be, he fills him in on all the other details. Um, when they get to the lake, uh, like everybody else is saying, there's no cabin there. There's no islands, whatever. Yeah. Uh, Alan's like, but look, there's remnants of a bridge. And Barry's like, buddy, that's your really <laughs> pushing. <laughs> uh, yeah, there, there sure is, pal. Good call. He's like, uh-huh. I don't believe you, but I believe you believe you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good line. It is a good line. <laughs> I'm not saying you're lying. I'm just saying I don't believe it makes about as much sense as the whole like I I trust you with everything but except the truth. The truth. Yeah, yeah. Like, okay. <laughs> so they- <laughs> you opened that 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 door, my friend. We're just gonna yeah. Let's just keep going. Well, let's Fine. dive right into it. Um, and uh, Barry convinces Alan to uh, all right. Let's just go to that visitor center area and, and let's rent a cabin. So they drive up there and they run into Rose, uh, who Barry had met previously on his quest to find Alan. And she tells him about Rusty's dog, Max, getting all torn up the previous night. And Alan, um, and then there's a moment where Barry stares at Rose's butt and yeah. Rose Rose kisses Alan on the cheek. Um, and Barry's like, why don't, why do you get all the, the kisses? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's what he does. It's just... It's- He's just bummed out, you know? He's just he's um, a sad guy for a lot of sad, reasons. <laughs> sad guy for a lot of reasons. They call him Butterball, I think, at one point. Yeah, <laughs> and a, and like a red Butterball because he's wearing a red raincoat or some damn thing. Like, oh. oh, buddy. Um, <laughs> Alan checks in with Rusty about renting a cabin, and his dog Max is definitely not in a good place. Is like all bandaged up. Um, but Max actually responds well to Alan, and Rusty's like, oh, that's weird. You know, usually Max isn't friendly with people who are, like, not from around here. Um, and then Rusty also gives them directions to Lover's Peak from where they are. And at the end of this chapter, we get another segment, but it's in the first person about a metal trunk with a lot of uh, batteries and ammo and guns and flares and things like that. Um, chapter 9. They get to the cabin, Alan takes a shower, and takes a nap, and has a dream about Alice walking down the street in the city, but he can never actually catch up to her. Alan wakes up, his heart is pounding, Barry offers to call one of his clients and former FBI agent to come up and help handle things with the kidnappers, but Alan's, no, I'm doing it myself. Yeah. Um, yeah. Barry then makes Alan a delicious triple-decker peanut butter and jelly Sammy, and I want one. I, I, it's such a gene. Uh, it's such a simple piece of genius. Three pieces of bread, two layers of peanut butter and jelly. My God, I've been living a lie. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. We can get more calories out of the simple PB and J. What? <laughs> It's listen, like eating two PB and J's at once. <laughs> listen, people, you got to stick with the fat guys. We have the best ideas. We always do. Just stick with us. Uh, so Barry gives him a triple decker uh, a PB and J, and it really did. It makes Al, it improves Alan's mood. <laughs> it does. It does. Immensely. It visibly improves his mood. It's, yeah, I believe that. That's the only that would have been the least believable thing in the entire book. If he took a bite of that and was like, oh, "I don't really want it," like that would now I'd be like, "Bullshit, fuck you." I don't no, he you. wolfs that that triple decker oh. PB and J down, and all the way down. he's he's like, "All right, I'm ready to take. I'm ready to. <laughs> I'm ready to take on some kidnappers." Right. Uh, <laughs> ready to 
shoot someone in the head for my wife if need be. <laughs> if need be. <laughs> okay. Um, Barry wants to come with Alan, but Alan isn't having it. Uh, he wants Barry to uh, stay behind in case something happens. Um, and then this chapter ends with another segment, uh, but this time it's about the sheriff that we heard from earlier and her issues with an FBI agent named Nightingale um, and how he's he's kind of an asshole. Yep. And uh, yeah, that's, that's where we will leave it uh, for the time being. That was the first nine chapters yeah. of Alan Wake. Yeah, roughly first hundred pages. Yeah. So, uh, how are you feeling so far? Uh, we we talked about this earlier. And Kevin and I kind of both agreed where it was just this feeling of like, after the past few books we've read, not all of them to this extent, but there was just it's so shockingly competent that we're just like, good, good, it's fine, it's fine, this is fine, this is yeah, it's 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 got a a steady plot. I do find some of the I found a couple of the jumps from one scene to another to be a little jarring to the point where I, I had to stop and reread because I wasn't like, for example, when he goes into the water uh, after Alice and suddenly he's in his car and it's, it's, it's very abrupt um, in a way that made me go, wait, where the fuck am I? And I had to right. reread it a couple of times before I started to uh, get it. But it's, uh, it's well-written. Um, it is following the game uh to the t uh however uh with a game like this that involves so much more than just move to this area kill a bad guy move to that area kill a bad guy this is a genuinely unique way of uh telling the story and it's 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 a different perspective because you're right in the game it is a first person thing but we're not hearing the narrative constantly in the same way um right so I think it's it's it isn't one of those novelizations that you're like why the f- what, what what's the point of even doing this, right? Um, I, I can see the value in it. What about you? What do you what do you think so far? Yeah, I like it so far. I feel like it's a little um, it, it's it's a little like it's fine. You know, I, yeah. I I don't like that Alan is such a jackass all the time oh, it's 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 pretty i mean he's don't get me wrong he doesn't come off as like the coolest dude ever in in the game either but man, right but like, it's just it's very heavy-handed in the book yeah, um i yeah, think I it could have been a little bit lighter um just make him a just a touch likable something a little kernel of likable likability yeah. goes a long way just a little um, just a little yeah yeah um, not that all your protagonists have to be likable and all that jazz. It's just, it's very like in the book, he's, he's just, it's just, it feels like every chapter there's a reminder that Alan is an asshole. Um, yeah. And, and, it, and they, they think that being clever is going to make us like him more. Uh, but even the clever spots are kind of smarmy and dickish. So, right. Yeah. It's tough. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I mean that'll no that'll be it for for it uh for tonight. We'll we'll come back to it next week. Uh yes. but in the meantime, I have an important question to ask you. Please. Uh what are you playing? Oh, I I'm so glad you asked, uh, because I actually have big news. I finished Far Cry six. Woo! Yeah, yeah. I Yeah. I uh st- stand by basically everything I said. Uh it is it is of the modern Far Cries, probably the weakest. Um, the villains, despite the fact that uh, he is portrayed by uh, uh, the incomparable uh, Giancarlo Esposito, uh, I just, I, I, it wasn't as interesting of a character as we've dealt with with these iconic villains in the past. The story wasn't often as interesting, but goddamn, the fucking play, the gameplay kept me hooked I, I can't i can't call it a bad game by any stretch of the imagination i don't put 50 plus hours into games that i think are bad um, right it it really knows how to get it get its hooks into you in the same way that the other uh far cry games do it just didn't have uh it doesn't have the personality uh of the other ones uh which is a real damn shame um right but uh but yeah so i, I finished that 
And I am also, let me see, let me see how much. I am 17 hours into Aliens Dark Descent. Okay. Uh, and that's kind of a similar place for me uh, because I can't stop playing it. I am so engaged by it. It has this wonderful gameplay loop that is very methodical. It takes its time. You have to take your time. You will be punished for not taking your time. Uh, right. You have to be really thoughtful about how you're doing these things. Uh, it's unnerving and frightening in a way that I've never seen in a strategy game. It keeps the tension up. Um, having said all of that, it has some bugs in it, no pun intended, uh, right. that, that are so infuriating at times that it's I, I wouldn't be this mad if I wasn't so in love with this game. Right. Uh, I want this to be my game of the year. It, it, okay. For me personally, it scratches so many different itches. It's got a really genuinely good storyline. I like the storyline. I like the drama. Um, it's got a lot of those just good aliens tropes in there. The strategy element of it is fantastic. It's It's got this wonderful vibe uh, combination of like Warhammer Dawn of War uh, strategy with XCOM delivery and darkest dungeon follow through. Sure. And those are all flavors that we can all get behind and love. And, and, and it just so happens that those are three of my favorite uh, games ever. So I, it, I find myself getting so frustrated. There are the, these bugs where you can't finish a side quest or something like that. You have to start over a certain thing. And sometimes it still won't work. And, mm. and uh, because this is a game I should be hundred percenting. Uh, right, because I love it. I'm having so much fun with it, and and because I'm having so much fun, it makes those janky uh, bugs that those much little more yeah, it, it, those moments are just killers, you know. Yes, yes, exactly. So yeah, I'm I love it. I'm very frustrated with it uh, at times. Not not all the time. I'm, I'm making it sound like there's a thing behind every door. It's it's not like that. In fact, it's just that. You'll get this groove, you'll get this rhythm going, and I'm at a point in the game where I have I've done a good enough job that my I've got a pretty solid coterie of Marines here, that right. uh, pretty pretty hardy stock of people that uh, that I I can handle most stuff that comes my way if I go about it in the right way, and uh, I get into a rhythm, I start feeling good, I'm like here we go, it's you know the uh, the the scissors on the wrapping paper start to glide, and I feel fantastic, and then. You just hit this thing that you're like, there's no excuse for this. That's just such a basic thing. Why is that so broken? And and it and it just it it frustrates the hell out of me. But having said yeah. that, I fucking love it. I I can't stop playing it. It's exactly what I was hoping it was going to be outside of right. the uh, the jank. So yeah, fuck. Uh, yeah. What about you? What are you playing? So I played since we last spoke. I played and beat Amnesia: The Bunker. Ooh, I need to hear all about this. How'd you like um, it? It, I, I loved it. Um, I, f I feel like it has, um, it, it didn't quite hit the uh, mark in the last fifteen minutes or so. Mm -hmm. um, I, I wasn't a huge fan of the, the final fifteen minutes um, because there's like, it's basically it's like there's the final there's like a final boss encounter puzzle encounter. Um, without giving too much away, it's one of those things that, like, if you have a, if there's, a, if you have a particular item in your inventory, it makes it a cakewalk, and otherwise, it makes it nearly impossible. <laughs> it's it's yep. basically the balance between it, like so much so that I was like, fine. I, after after fighting, after doing the the final encounter for like an hour. I was like, fine. And I went and I went back all the way back to the other side of the map, <laughs> got the item, came all the way back. And then it was like two minutes. Yeah. And I yeah, was suddenly done. It's, yeah, it's done. <laughs> done. Yeah. I, I, I totally get what you're saying. And it, it, that's, 
<laughs> that's why the last time we talked about when I was playing it, it was that was that's the shit that I want to give the designers where it's just like, OK, it's like if you could think about it, you can do it. It's like, um, but there is a pretty specific way that this is meant to be done. And it's kind of hard to deny. Right. That. There's some very specific things. And like the if you think about it, you can do it and be like, OK, that's fine. But then like you shouldn't be um, like you shouldn't be having like things in your path that you can't like just blow up. You know what I right. mean? Right. <laughs> right. Right. If you can think about it, you can do it. And I, I set a piece of dynamite and it isn't enough to blow up a, a little chain. Like, yeah. I, I I understand in gaming mechanics why that is, but if you're telling me that it's this mind blowing, right. if you then then that's bullshit. If I can break a padlock with a brick, but I can't break a chain with that brick, when they're basically the same material, right? There's like a there's like a cognitive dissonance. So well, I love the game. I think it was it was like it has some really good moment. It's like basically just like four hours of alien isolation <laughs> yeah yeah really intense World a very War intense version isolation. of alien isolation with no uh, with no uh radar um yeah, yeah. <laughs> or, i liked or, the map system i thought that was yeah. great yeah with, yeah the map system system was neat in that you had you could not you didn't have a map with right. you you right. had to go all the way back to administration and look at the map to figure out where things were. Yeah. I thought that was kind of neat. I thought um, that was pretty, that, that analog aspect of it was really cool. Yeah. So yeah, I, 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 I dug it. Um, it, it'll probably be on my game of the year list when yeah, I'm, same. you know, when I, when all is said and done, it's going to be, it's going to be on the list. Um, and then what else uh, I played and beat just because I had it. Uh, I think you had bought it for me like a while ago. Um, the uh, horror of Salazar house. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. 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 It, I mean, it only takes like, takes a couple hours to a couple hours it's tops, yeah. it, but it's, it's a really neat point and click. Um, yeah. It's got some, it's also got some alien isolation vibes to it. It does. Yeah. Actually there, <laughs> you have to hide and, and yeah. keep, there's like a basically a stalker walking around the house as you and you have to keep uh, track of like where the hiding spots are um, when you get notification that the stalker is onto you. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, Horror of Sal's our house, uh, neat little game, uh, very lo-fi. It's a lo-fi point and click uh, that is very in the mold of like Deja Vu or uh, what was it, Shadowgate. Um, yeah. What was yeah. the other one that? Yeah, I think it was that. Um, but with real time aspects to it, um, yeah. rather than than paid like room by room. Um, so that that was that was pretty cool. Um, what else have I been playing? Uh, I, I started back on Street Fighter Six. Because uh, okay. <laughs> I had been playing it and then I stopped. And now I'm back into it and doing my uh, uh, doing the world tour. Um, and it's it's so fun. I, it's like you can just sit there and play that all day, you know. Man, I, um, I might have to pick that one up. It's I haven't, fun. I haven't been this intrigued by fighting game in a very, very long time. I'm gonna. Yeah, and it. with the modern controls, I think it it really plays into people who are, uh, you know, casuals like myself, right. um, and are like, I'm not gonna do that input. And they're like, how about this input where you hold this button and press this button? I'm like, yeah, I can do that. Yeah, maybe I can do that input. Yeah, <laughs> maybe, maybe I can do that. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Oh, gosh. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm playing Street Fighter VI. Um, and then because we're reading Alan Wake, I started playing Alan Wake. Um, so we'll let, I'm going to double double feature my Alan Wake and all, that way I can kind of keep tabs on the differences between the book and the, and the game and all that. That's smart. Yeah. That's, that's um, a good idea. I, I, yeah, I uh, why not? it seems very, the, sorry. Yeah. It seems like a very literal, um, like, uh, translation of the game so far. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. It's, as far as, yeah, that's the thing. I, I played and beat Alan Wake for the first time last year. Um, uh, as part of my education in horror games and uh 
and I don't remember everything, but yeah, it's, it's, as I recall, mostly all there. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, that'll do it for tonight's episode. Before we uh, go anywhere, uh, Phil, do you have uh, uh, any any thoughts of a place that people could go huh. on something. the internet? On the internet? Yeah. Oh, oh, I think I know exactly what you mean. I think what you okay. mean is patreon.com slash pixelitpod. That's that's yes. that's obviously the place that people should go. A place where you can, for as little as a dollar a month, support our endeavor to read about and talk about video game novelizations and adaptations uh, over and over and over again until our eyes fall out of our head because we didn't get the uh, uh, the uh, holy grail soon enough or fast enough or even the correct one. So sure. that's because this is just what Kevin and I are going to uh, we, we hit a point, ladies and gentlemen, we're, we're past two years doing this show past and, two uh, years. And, and in podcast terms, that basically means that we have to do this uh, into our uh, into the autumn and winter of our existence. Yeah, um, yeah. we I'm, can't I'm stop with now. that. Yeah, yeah, there's no stop. <laughs> I'm good with that. I just, it, but it is a fact that that's what we've got to do. So if you want to support us and in exchange get some cool exclusive content, which is coming out, ladies and gentlemen, uh, please hit up patreon.com slash pixelitpod. Uh, do it today. Do it today. Do it today. And if you just want to not totally commit to that whole Patreon vibe, we got some other websites for you. Twitter, Instagram, uh, slash Pixelit Pod on both of them. Uh, you go to our website, pixelitpod.com, uh, join our mailing list. Uh, you can join our Discord, uh, all that good stuff. And uh, it's great, it's wonderful. But, you know, Patreon is also great and wonderful. Come on. Come on. Just, just one buck a month. That's like, buck that's like, that's like a coffee. That's like, that's actually like half of a coffee now. With, you can't you know, afford anything. Uh, can't afford for any us. Uh, for us you can buy for us. us for a dollar a month buy us for a dollar you can you can buy us for one dollar yeah. a month one dollar a month you can feed these children for one dollar a month <laughs> in the arms of the angels they were just sitting there yeah I'm the grumpy cat <laughs> that's just manged covered in <laughs> man, oh. yes oh. Uh, you what's your name adopt, holding so up you the... could put me to sleep you know? yeah <laughs> What's your name holding up a dog? You know, that yeah. you can save these dogs. This animal. This it's animal just, for only 25 uh, cents a month. You could save uh, these podcasters. You could save cents. these podcasters for only 25 cents a month. Or a dollar a dollar a month. A dollar. dollar. A month. Yeah. Yeah. Although, yeah. if we could figure out a way to accept 25 cents a month, we would. Nice. We'd, we'd probably do that. Yeah. But the, with the Patreon that. cut, they, they would probably require us to, like, be paid in hay pennies so yeah yeah they'd, they'd um, figure out a way they'd figure out a way to split it like, right down well we had to go back to 1870 but we got yeah. a hay penny for you <laughs> we're making it happen <laughs> lucky lucky you <laughs> thanks patreon thanks patreon yeah uh and uh yeah i'll do it good night bye